Hi neighbor, welcome to Wild Homestead Living. My name's Kevin and today we're going to be talking a bit about the garden fence that we installed around our raised beds. There's an old saying that says good fences make good neighbors and that's especially true if your neighbors are wildlife that find your garden plants delicious. So let's take a closer look at this fence and see how we're using it to deter our wild neighbors from becoming unintended dinner guests. Whether you're growing your garden on a large acreage in the country or in a window box outside of your apartment, chances are you have wild animals nearby that want to partake in your feast. And let's be clear, those animals have no idea that you consider those plants your property. A wild animal doesn't eat your garden because it wants to upset you. As far as the animal's concerned, those plants are just like any other plants it might encounter. It's hard not to take it personally if you find that a wild animal has eaten your garden but it really isn't personal from the animal's perspective. What we have here is a failure to communicate. Since upsetting humans never works out well for wild animals, I'm pretty sure they would avoid it if they could. We think wild animals should leave our gardens alone. They don't understand that idea. What they do understand is access, risk, and self-preservation. And this fence is designed to both make it more difficult for the animals to access our garden and to make it feel more risky should they make the attempt. When thinking about garden fencing, you need to think about which specific animals you're trying to exclude. We'll do a future video on how to take a wildlife inventory on your property so you can predict potential conflicts. But for today, let me just tell you that Julie and I primarily built this fence to exclude deer and rabbits. Black-tailed deer and eastern cottontail rabbits are abundant on this property. And as luck would have it, both species really like to dine on garden plants. When we chose and installed our fencing, we tried to look at our garden from the perspective of a deer or a rabbit, starting first with the deer. We sunk our fence posts slightly shallower than we normally would have uh, on a fence of this type to raise the height of the top rail. Now it's only about five and a half feet, which is low enough that a deer could clear it if it wanted to. But we set it at that height knowing also that inside we were going to have fairly, fairly narrow walkways between our raised beds. So the deer would not only need to jump over this five and a half fence, they would have kind of an unclear landing spot. And because our garden itself is so narrow, they would immediately find themselves in an enclosed space, which is not a comfortable place for a deer. That raises the perceived risk if they were to go in after these plants. Now, nothing's to stop a deer from reaching its head through the fence to try to access those garden beds, and they have tried, we've seen them, but we thought of that as well, so we set up our raised beds in the very middle of the garden space, making them just out of reach for the deer that do try to reach through and take a nibble. Now, while deer are most likely to access the garden by going over the fence, rabbits are most likely to gain access by going under. With that in mind, we installed galvanized chicken wire, attached it to the bottom rail. The wire comes down flush with the ground and then goes horizontally about three feet underneath the gravel that you see inside the garden. The gravel itself ha also has a, a purpose, as does the copper tape that you see around each of the raised garden beds. We'll talk about that in a future video. But right now, just focusing on rabbits. If a rabbit did try to access the garden by digging, it's gonna to have to do a lot of digging. It's gonna take some time. We're probably gonna discover it before it gets in or it's gonna give up long before it has access. Bottom rail here is technically low enough that a rabbit could jump over, but it's gonna land in an open space in there. It's gonna be exposed without cover. If it wants to access the plants it's going after, it's gonna to have to either reach up for them or jump into the uh, raised bed itself which is gonna leave it fairly open to predators, especially aerial predators. And we have a lot of hawks around here and the rabbits are well aware of that. So all of those factors increase the perceived risk for that animal for going for that particular food item. And we're hoping that they will decide on the side of self-preservation and decide that it's not worth it. As you can see, we've planted a cover crop around the outside edge of our garden. Um, it's mixed in with some fall leaves now as well. We're eventually going to till all of that under and plant deer and 
rabbit resistant plants to create an additional barrier between the garden and wildlife. Uh, at the moment though, we don't plan on eating any of this, so we're more than happy to share with our wild neighbors. Although our fencing has worked so far, wild animals have an endless capacity to surprise us. Every wild animal we encounter comes from a long line of ancestors that were experts at overcoming obstacles and surviving. We have no doubt that given enough time, wild animals are gonna show us the weaknesses in our fencing here. But we're going to do our best to learn the lessons that they teach us, not to get angry with them, to improve our fencing, and to be the good neighbors to them that we're asking them to be to us. If you found this information valuable, I invite you to visit our website and subscribe for the latest updates from Wild Homestead Living. While you're there, you can also download our 23-page Quick Start Garden Guide to help you plan for the coming growing season. And if you like this video, or if you didn't like this video and would like to comment, uh, please do so in the comment section below. All right, thanks so much for watching. Be well, and we'll see you next time.